Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Let him start. Yeah. We will wait just two minutes more, then we'll start. Okay, sir. Okay. Asmita, next week, no, next Tuesday is a holiday. Okay, sir. I'll... So, so next week there it won't be a program. Okay, because many okay. people will not be able to attend because of that uh, puja holidays. Ha, so that's what I'll take. That's yeah. So next yeah. week we'll skip after that. Uh, we'll resume. Okay, sir. I'll... Okay. Okay. Just to inform other people also. Okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Okay. Good evening to all of you. As usual, we'll start with the short case first. Is my screen visible to you all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, this is a story of a 40 year old hypertensive lady. Her complaint started one week back as imbalance while walking, with tendency to fall to either side, associated with diplopia and some funny feeling on the left side of the body. Diplopia was with horizontal separation and was more on looking to the left side. The deficit peaked over the next few minutes. And at the peak of the deficit, she needed two persons to stand or walk about. The funny feeling on the left side subsided in one hour's time. Over the next two days, the imbalance also improved. Now, in fact, I saw the patient only on the fifth day after the recovery, but the idea of bringing the case to show some interesting findings. Not very interesting, but common but not often seen. So I thought I will bring that case for the, as a short case. So this is the video of the patient. Look into the left side. There is failure of reduction. Right side, okay, left side, there is. There is no primary pitch nystagmus or no nystagmus in the and you find that is good. Good the point. Good the right side. The best phenomenon is That's all the finding. Even apparently mild facial elevation to the left side. No The next video. 
Okay, the question is, what are your findings in this patient? That etiology is, is obviously obvious to you. Is obviously obvious to you. <clears throat> what are your findings, anyone? Okay, the striking finding is right eye and nose, which everyone can make out. Because it's a, a you know, with inferior eye and nose, because there is adduction failure, abduction nystagmus, and convergence the right eye is adducting. That tells you it is not in the medial ductus or a third node nucleus affected. And there is upward gaze restriction. There is counterclockwise rotary nystagmus from the examiner's point of view. There is no obvious Q deviation. Convergence is intact. Absent Bell's phenomenon. Right lower facial weakness. Tandem walking defect. These are the findings. So how do you explain everything together in this particular patient? Where is the site of lesion? Anyone? Am I audible to you? Yeah, please, yeah. Uh, sir, pontine lesion extending to midbrain, sir. Pontine lesion. Why do you want to necessarily implicate a pontine lesion? Why can't we explain by uh, midbrain? Sir, sir uh, tandem walking, sir. Yeah, that indicates that there is a gate attack says that that can be due to lesion in the midbrain as well because the involvement of the superior subrelapid and the crossing fibers. Upcase is affected, sir. Upcase is affected. And there is looking at there is an nystagmus and beating upward. Um, so, could it not be different sites, sir, instead of one? Yeah, what are the different sites you would like to keep in mind? Uh, midbrain. Okay. Because midbrain. of the. Yeah. Okay. Midbrain lesion can explain everything except one finding. What is that finding? Element facial palsy. No, that's in fact human facial because the right only lower part is affected. Okay. Okay. Upper part, I did not show it was. If you, if you say ask the patient to close the eye, you can find that patient is doing a very good orbicularis contraction. I will show that once again. The convergence intact, sir. Convergence is affected, intact, correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. That, uh, So it, it can be found if there is convergence. I'll just Rabbitrice is very good power. Rabbitrice is very good power. But to keep it normal. Right side. Okay. So that's the Rabbitrice. Only raw part of the face is affected. So for example, I will last part I will show the video once again. Okay, okay, okay. They are partial but not fully. Am I ready to move it? Okay. This also you take. Move it up there, ma. Take it. If you do, do not come here. I will not hear you. Not hear you. Not hear you. Not hear you. Okay. So, 
whatever it wherever you postulate you can't explain the right human lesion in this patient there is no pyramidal weakness anywhere only lower facial weakness is there that you can't explain otherwise everything can be fit with can be fitted with the midbrain lesion the convergence is intact means convergence center is paired but the lesion is likely to be in the element of in the midbrain otherwise you can't explain the upward gaze palsy and the absence pels yeah please yeah anyone would like to make a comment okay so what do you want to do now mri mri okay so this is the mri the mri showing <clears throat> there is a lesion in the right lower midbrain or upper pons you can see here in the prior it is more division also showing the lesion that particular area it is confined only to the right side that lesion now to explain the right lm human facial pons you can't explain so what actually the patient had was no human facial pulse at all it is only a facial asymmetry when he asked the patient to excuse the eye and then show the teeth fully well that so called facial pulse disappeared so you cannot explain that right lower facial pulse it's only a facial asymmetry which the patient had been had so it's nothing great in that patient but i would like to ask why how do you explain the upward up, uh, the, uh, the nystagmus looking upward and the rotary nystagmus and the patient is the right eye is having a rotary nystagmus which is beating towards the right side that is anti clockwise from your from your side this is part of the mlf syndrome that is see you know the neural integrator for the upward case is the indicis nucleus of kaha the vestibular input from the superior vestibular nuclei reaches the indicis nucleus of kaha through the mlf so when the mlf is affected the upward case cannot be sustained the eyes drift back to the primary position and you will get an upward nystagmus so this is looks like a a bit nystagmus but it's truly not a bit nystagmus because there is no upward nystagmus in the primary position or any other position only an extreme looking up it gets that thing. that shows that the upward case can't be sustained that is where there is a corrective uh, the i drift back to the primary position and as a corrective fast component upward that is that that is that can occur in ml ml is usually bilateral ml but sometimes you will get ml ablation also can produce this is because the neural integrator is leaky because it is not stabilized by the procular input which is passing coming through the superior superior vestibular nucleus and and to the indicis nucleus of the eye the rotary nystagmus on clock with this is anti clockwise rotation is also due to the effects of the vestibular connection of the extraocular nuclei in medullary lesion you get a when rotary nystagmus beating to the contralateral side after crossing in the mlf or above that lesion you get rotary nystagmus to the same side beating towards the right same side that means the right sided lesion the fast com rotary component will be towards the right side if it is a medullary lesion the fast component will be to the contralateral side it's all part of the mlf syndrome so any questions sir when docs yeah please ask um this up case uh, difficulty sir hmm. um for both pursuit as well as for circuit it is applicable yeah they depend upon which pathway is affected usually in upward gaze palsy if the ri mlf is alone is affected the pursuit can be spared you only the extraocular nucleus should be intact okay if otherwise the pursuit now if the nucleus also affected you get pursuit also will be affected similarly uh, you will the point differentiate between an upward case with an in nuclear intranuclear palsy is the preservation of the bells bells phenomenon here even though the patient's got upward case palsy bells phenomenon should have been intact 
but it so happened that in the midbrain region bell spall the bell spall is also affected because the bell center is also getting affected the center for the bell spall also is affected yeah you you, you please go on with your doubt please uh sir so, uh, the doubt was that um uh -huh. if the saccade uh, upward saccade is affected uh -huh. and the eyes move down then uh -huh. they will not be able to make a corrective saccade upwards which we misinterpret as a your, your point is gaze nystagmus yeah that's perfectly right but you hear that upward gaze policy is not total it's a partial detroit gaze if the totally upward gaze policy is there then you will not get this phenomenon you can't patient cannot look up and there's no question of a eccentric gaze here if you look carefully upward movement is not totally lost i'll come to that video see i'll, I'll show the video once again ിൽ you know the when you normally blink the eye or forcefully close the uh, eye by uh, contact the orbicular and socle the eye is usually rolls up sometimes rolls up and outward that is a normal bell's phenomenon which is present in every i mean in normally in all persons need not yes, be sir. all persons sometimes in 20% bell's phenomenon can be absent also here if it is the why this is useful is that suppose you have got a person with upward gaze restriction We are at a loss to differentiate whether it is a true gaze palsy or infranuclear paralysis due to, say, for example, some affection of the muscle or due to the affection of the nucleus or affection of the nerve. In that situation, we have to make the eyeball contract to see that the muscles are intact through reflexly. So, use a ref some reflex to make the eyeball go up, either by vestibular, particular vestibular ocular reflex, or by Bell's phenomenon. If to truly call it as a upward gaze palsy, you should demonstrate that that muscle should be contracting reflexly by some means. So the two reflex which you use is one is the particular vestibular ocular reflex. The eyes are moving up, and that that clearly tell you it is a gaze palsy. Secondly, the eyes are moving up on Bell's phenomenon. On asking the patient to screw the eye, eyes goes upward again, tells you that it is not an infranuclear infranuclear palsy. it has to be gaze palsy in this patient in this patient i expect the bell's phenomenon should be normal however this is absent that means that is that means that it is not just a gaze palsy alone it can be either a element palsy as you said as somebody can argue about it or the other, the center itself is affected in the brain so where is the center okay. yeah please go on sir yeah bell center where is it Bell's center. Bell's center. Bell's center is supposedly in the midbrain. Supposedly, that is, if in the case of PSP, what happens is that you know, initially you get supranuclear gaze palsy. Subsequently, saccades will go, then the pursuits will go, then the convulsions will go, then Bell's phenomenon will go. Ultimately, every the woman will be restricted, except for the VOR. VOR is the last to go in PSP. So this is because of the gradual progression of the disease affecting one center of the brain. This is also useful in differentiating between human bilateral human facial palsy from bilateral element element facial palsy, which we uh, I mentioned sure the case last two three weeks back, where the patient had apparently apparently facial palsy was looking like an element palsy, but his Bell's phenomenon was in, is exaggerated. Or if it was absent, telling you that it is a human and not element. If it's a bilateral element facial palsy, Bell's phenomenon will be exaggerated or in well present. In that patient, it was absent, telling you that it was a human facial palsy. That patient had bilateral cortex bulbar involvement. Okay. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, please. 
Shall I go to the next case? Ah, uh, sir, sir, bilateral human element facial palsy. I couldn't yeah. understand, sir. Yeah, the uh, normally in there is you know the way in bilateral element and bilateral human facial palsy will produce weakness of both upper part of the face, that is frontalis, orbicularis, and lower part of the face, because both sides are affected. So there is no question of a unilateral representation part. So in that case, how to define the problem? So one thing is that in bilateral human facial palsy, the emotional fibers are preserved, so they will, they will be facial movements will be there on during spontaneous or hearty laughter will be there. That is, so emotional palsy will not be there, whereas in element everything will be lost. Second point is that exaggerated facial movements, for example, if you are rooting, sucking, or mental, they all will be exaggerated in human facial, but will be absent in element. You can indirectly utilize the jaw jerk also, even though jaw jerk is not sustained by the patient. Patient. Level. Third problem, third reflex which we utilize is the Bell's phenomenon. Bell's phenomenon is present in element facial palsy, absent in bilateral human facial palsy. So that way you can differentiate whether it is a bilateral element in jaw. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So I'll go to the next case. Another doubt, sir. The bell center is the bell center is in the midway. Yeah. Then how is it connected with the bilateral? Yeah. That in fact we still do not know why this how the supranuclear fibers are going for bell phenomenon. It's supposedly this fiber is coming from accompanying the corticobulba fibers for the for the seventh limb. That is, they accompany the corticobulba fibers, descend down along the fibers to the seventh limb nucleus but does not end in the nucleus. And they go ascent upward and then connected with the superior rectus muscle, of nuclei. Before connected, there is a supposedly center in the middle. Go to the bell center and then produce this kind of a contraction. That is the theory behind that. But no textbook clearly mentions exactly the pathway of bell center. A focal midbrain lesion can produce an absent bell phenomenon alone. That's also known. That is why in bilateral human it is lost because these fibers descend along with the corticobulb fibers for this particular reflex. There are other elements. Level is It is difficult. No, no textbooks gives any clear explanation. If you look at the literature, also nobody clearly gives it the supranuclear control or the reflex of uh, Bell's phenomenon. Okay. So I'll go to the next case. This is a story of a 70 year old man. In fact, this patient did not come for consultation. This man came for consultation for his wife, who has been having dumbness of the left hand, for which surgery was done in the left hand, thinking it is a carpal tunnel syndrome. But the patient did not get in relief, so he brought his wife to me for a second opinion. So, examination of that lady. Just one minute, uh, hospital call. Just one minute, please. Hello? Hello? Examination of the lady revealed features of high cervical myelopathy, point of neurofibrom, ultimately operated. The funny, funny part is that this husband was watching how I was examining his wife. And after the examination, he requested that he also should be examined. Since he was having some imbalance while walking for the last six months. So, in fact, he did not come for examination. So, I, with reluctance, I examined him also since he has come from a long way. So his complaints were actually only one complaint, imbalance while walking for five, six months. No other complaints, no complaints related to the upper limb, no sensory complaints anywhere, no bladder problems. So this is the examination of the patient. At the extraocular moments were normal. All tailors were normal. The upper limb tone power were normal. Okay. 
अपने लिए बोल्ड मसल्स हैं ना मोटर is the power was normal eh it was normal this flex normal reflexes upper limbs well it's normal reflexes triceps normal as i tell you see can some down reflexes were intact Lowly brisk is brisk, elderly brisk may be slightly more brisk on the right side. Angle check, however, was normal, not brisk. <coughs> to my surprise, panda was up going. I checked again. I couldn't make it down going. It was up going. More consistently on the left side. Touch sensation, everything, all things were normal. He said there was some level on the time. I checked again; it was not convincing. He says everything. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. So same for the road. It's also not no level of the trunk. It's again once again on the thigh. This time we did not say any such thing. Vibration was normal in the upper limb. Also in the lower limb. Non sense was normal in the upper and lower limb. Is also no. Now come to the gate. You can stand with eyes open or closed in some mild imbalance. No mild rhombus is very questionable. We are not sure about. Yeah. Now speed. Can't can't do it. Can't do it. Speed. This gate is almost normal. Correct, it's positive to the right. Not very sure. There is not much problem. Take. Put it in here. Put it under there. 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 There are no sensory loss. So these are the findings in this patient. Finding on examination, pain is normal. Motor system upper limbs torn power normal in the upper limb. Lower limb mild spasticity both the lower limb slightly more on the right side. Power no however normal. DTR upper limbs normal. Lower limb knee jerk this bilateral. There is no doubt about it. Angle jerk is normal. Pandar up going bilaterally. Sense system normal, thrombus very positive. Gait almost normal, very mild dragging on the right foot. Is for you to judge whether this person or not. Tandem walking is defective. So where is your localization? What do you want me to do? Features suggest of some myelopathy, sir. Maybe cervical compressive versus non-compressive. Okay, very good. So what do you want me to do now? MRI. MRI brain with cervical ulcers. 
You said cervical, no? Cervical. So we... We'll brain take... also, sir. Why brain? Uh, abdominals were abs uh, preserved in, in view of, in spite of myelopathy, maybe any cortical cause should, uh, we also should consider. But cortical also abdominal can be preserved absent. Remodulation anywhere can produce absent abdominal difference. Speech and bladder. Normal. They are not affected. Appellants are normal. Speech is not affected. Okay, you want MRI the cervical spine? So, cervical spine is normal. This is the axial cut. No appendicity anywhere. So, what else you need? Breaks. Why not thoracic cut? Dorsal MRI, sir. Yeah, you need a dorsal MRI because least may be above L1. Yes, sir. Yeah. Please, please. Because absent of the bilateral perimeter signs, so it can be that possibility has to be kept in mind. Or can be non compressive myelopathy as well. Okay, we can non compressive myelopathy, but it can be nearly PLS or uh, non some other um, condition like a topical spastic therapy and not or developing. Dosal cord has to be examined also. So, our thoracic spine was now. The so, ankles are relatively uh, less brisk compared to the knees. Any clue yeah. that will give, sir? Yeah, well, that possibility or the thing may be subclinical neuropathy you have to keep in mind. That maybe we are not very sure about it. It has no sensory loss per se. So, you have to consider a possibility of myelin neuropathy developing. You don't know. It possibly you have to keep in mind because angle jack is not brisk. So, what do you want me to do now? Vitamin B. Cortical. cortical. You want cortex, okay. All of you want brain MRI, okay. Right. So, MRI brain was done. This is the uh, T2 weighted image. And what do you find there? In the right view. It's a dark AVM. You are right. It's a EM malformation there on the right occipital region. So this is the diffusion. Sorry, no diffusion, flare sequence. This is a, an SWA, so you can the, to the, see the AV malformation there. There's a draining veins there. And anti-sublatory is feeding that AVM. It's a contrast. This MR venogram showing the veins are dilated veins and the draining veins you can find out. And probably fed by the anterior sublatory. But probably definitely fed with the anterior sublatory. Also the MR angiogram also. Is a lower cut going up. See, this is the endless blood is feeding the AV. See, this is the upper cut again. This is the vein draining veins outward. This is the coronal cut. It's ACA feeding that uh, AVM on the left side. The question is, is this AVM unrelated or responsible for the parapery? That's my question. AVM is a medial occipital lobe. Is it incidental? He never has any headache or anything. He came with just for imbalance and we detected primal signs. Sir, will you please show a flare sequencer of brain? Yeah, I'll show the flare sequence. This is the flare, I'll show one second. This is the diffusion, this is the flare. He 
Mr. Flair. It's unrelated, sir. It's incidental finding. It's incidental finding. So what about this? So the question is very important because uh, whether to do, do intervention now or wait or wait, that's very important. So what do you think? Other people, any other opinion? It can be related, sir, but intervention may not be necessary. Some cortical hypoperfusion leading to some ataxic type of hemiparesis or mild spasticity. Now my question is, is the IVM is in the occipital lobe now? He has got bipedal sense in the lower limb. This is not feeding. related to the symptom, sir. It's different lesion. It's just an incidental finding. Okay, it could be incidental. So, sir, I think, uh, sir, uh, the lesion, uh, main findings are in the occipital. Main occipital. finding? Uh, Postic uh, post cerebral artery. Right, too. Yeah, that's a question. That's an answer. See, I'll tell you. So you may think that uh, uh, in a, in a, how you in the is I said under. I think it is not really unrelated. It's related because since the feeder is antisubrat, so main feeder is coming in the antisubrat, which is feeding the AVM. So what happens is that when the feeder is feeding the AVM, there's a shunting of the blood from the antisubrat. That produces ischemia in the territory of antisubrat. The antisubrat, you know, is supplying the leg area. So then, how to explain the bilateral affection? Because the feeder is also stealing from the opposite AC because the anti communicating anti. You got the point. So, antisubrat is feeding the, the EVM is posterior, but the AC is feeding that thing. So, the blood, whatever blood is there going to the antisubrat, is shunted towards the EVM. So the area separated with the anterior artery become greatly ischemic because of the steel phenomenon. Even though AVM is on one side, the anterior artery is stealing blood from the opposite anterior artery also because of the anti-communicating artery. This also deviates and the flow is diverted in the direction. That is explanation. I think is uh, which I thought it's this. It's a nice explanation, sir. And uh, but sir, uh, MC yeah. also is applying it. Why is there a steel phenomenon there? Yeah, but MMC is only mild supply. If you look at that thing, arterial supply. See, the, the main supply is the, this is the main, this is the supply here. Main supply is the anti supply. This whole thing is supplied by here. Okay. This is the main which is the cortical veins which you see there. Okay. But another possibility. Pardon? Another doubtful possibility is. Yeah. Since there is a vascular anomaly, yeah. flow in the post-communicating artery also may be affected, which, which, is, which gives a supply to internal capsule also. Post-communicating yeah. post -communicating artery in, in some people supply internal capsule also. Yeah, that can, that, of course, that can produce internal capsule supply. That can be there. But the question yeah. is, it's bilaterally is affected. So, not unilateral, bilateral pyramidal signs. I mean, bilateral hemisphere has to be dismantled. May, I think more possible would be in ACA because ACA, you know, he, you know can anti communicate cattle through that leak. You can steal away the blood from the opposite ACA. And in parasagittal region, is there in hypodensity or in cattle? That is, it's like the hypodensity areas. No, there are, we know real hypodensity. In fact, or anything can be seen in the prior sequence. But the, that whatever hypertensy is seen is the abnormal vasculature. So, so in fact, he went into Chitra for interventional, I mean, blocking whether through the uh, interventional radiologist for um, uh, uh, blocking of that. Okay. So, can the uh, Confirm it, sir. If you do spect, then it can show the hypoperfusion. Yeah, that of course we can do. Spect or spine, that can be done. But it also can show the hypoperfusion in that area. Yeah, correct. Prior, ordinary MRI did not show. But that we can do. Okay. Any questions?
This is a nice explanation, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll go to the next case then. Sir, one more doubt, sir. Then again, coming to the abdominal reflex, sir, you told cortical it may be, uh, it should be absent, but it is preserved in this case. How to explain that? No. <laughs> Those things are very difficult to explain. Here, the pyramidal lesion happens to be only on the leg area. The trunk, the pyramidal fibers of the trunk muscles are not affected. The upper limbs are also not affected. Trunk is also not affected. If the patient had loose reflex in the upper limb, but first in the upper limb, and then abdominal reflex is absent. That's an odd point for everything. Hyperimmunization. There you have to strongly consider a non-compressive matter. Okay, so upper limbs are also spastic, risk of reflexes. Then abdominal reflex is absent. That shows the selective involvement of those only cortical spinal fibers, sparing those fibers responsible for the abdominal reflex. That is what you find in motor neuron disease and you know, it is spastic parabola and things like that. You find that phenomenon. Even some compressive myelopathy I have seen, abdominal plus need not always be affected. It can be spared. But here it is easy because the findings are confirmed with the lower limb. And only subtle pyramidal signs are there in the lower limb. Thank you, sir. The medial area is affected. Trunk is spared. The endosubulatory trunk is not, does not come. Okay, now this is a story of a 60 year old lady. She came with a history of dizziness and imbalance while walking for the last two years. No other complaint. This is the video of the patient. When you examine him first, he had got a downbeat nystagmus. It's not been stacked. Looking up also, it is beating down in all directions. I made it lie down again. Stagmus is seen. It is more on keeping its neck extended. The head hanging position, lying down position. Then while sitting, is again head hanging. You can find that the segments is more. Here I am It is more now and delay. It is more on that position. So, rest of the examination. Let me say only that. Uh, initially, they should only find any other words, eight attacks here, yeah, nothing else. There was no upper limb in coordination or repairable limb at that time. So she had downbeat nystagmus, which is more when, when she got up, sorry, from lying to sitting position as well as in the head hanging position. And there was gate attacks here. So she came with an MRI, which was taken one year back. That is, again, that total duration is two years. That is one year after the onset of illness. And this was the MRI she has came with uh, MRI at that point of time. Essentially normal, no metal loss, cerebellum, everything appeared normal. This is a sagittal cut. There is nothing, no severe atrophy in the cerebellum or anything normal. This is a T1 weighted sequence. This is the flare. This is a diffusion. So she was, I couldn't make a diagnosis at that point of time. I thought I'll ask her to come for admission. She did not turn up since she had contacted COVID infection and that. She came only after one month. So this XLP examination was done after one month. This is the examination, second time after one month. Again, the downbeat nystagmus is the system. So the examination are all normal. 
not powerless to be done. It is mind, fingerness, important. The only power was normal. Reflexes are fully normal. Finger pressure is slightly brisk. And the reflexes are normal in the brain. AJ can actually take the spellings. Language is also normal. That's it. Sensation is normal. It is your joint sense vibration. Patient is just slightly maybe normal or I'm not that much sure. Some people yeah, I mean, do like this only. There's no real importance in the lower. Yeah. Still, like, it is keeping it for the winning of the shield. But undoubtedly, she has got. And cannot stand with eyes close and is protected against it. You can also with eyes closed, more even actually, even with eyes open, more on eyes closed. So, an examination, sorry, not RNS, craniness, don't be nystagmus, which is more in the head hanging position. Rest of the craniness were normal. Motor system tone power normal in both upper and lower limb. Detail slightly brisk in the lower limb. Plantar flexor, sensor system normal. Mild finger nose in coordination and heel shield, mild heel shield positivity. Then uh, get a tax is present. So, what do you think is likely diagnosis? Episodic attacks are dead. Pardon? Episodic attacks are dead. And I feel persistent attacks are not episodic, no, it's just an episodicity. Till episodic attacks are, will become continuous, persistent. Yeah. But, but there is no, in a, uh, Pramesh, I think you're, uh, I think some of the things, uh, instrument is on, that's why I got echo coming when you're speaking. Okay, you are using two two uh, two cadres at the same time. Okay, but she never had an episodic attacks in the past. Everything started two years back. Mild gate attacks are slowly progressing. Maybe positional canal disease in view of the positional worsening of don't be mistakes. No, I know. Okay. Still, I am not audible. I mean, you are not audible. Umar, I am not audible. Umar, please. So, one possibility. Uh, can you hear, sir? Yeah, you know, I can hear you. Yeah. So, one possibility could be a spinal cinnabar attack. So, SCA. Okay. So, SCA. Yeah, the other possibility could be any uh, uh, canal disease, sir, in view of uh, uh, worsening of the uh, that that's in, uh, the point that we can see while uh, lying the down good system uh, can be visible more. So, any canal disease. So there's some I heard spinal cellular attacks are restoring psychotic. Anyone can you can hear Umar what is telling? Can you reiterate what Umar was telling? First thing I heard, spinal cellular attacks, yeah. He was telling, telling about the, some canal disease, whether it could be a canal disease. No, no, how, how can you have canal disease produce in coordination of the upper limb? 
and gated tracts. Gated tracts are only they do not produce like that. Clinical diagnosis is CVG anomaly. Okay, one possible yeah, so downbeat gated tracts you have to control CVG anomaly. It's just particularly patients know dysarthria that you have to keep strongly. Whenever limbataxia is there with downbeat disagnosis, common thing is AC, 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 do not see any more information. So any other possibility? So I see it is another possibility. But there is what is again is that the previous MRA which was brought by the patient did not find it. Yeah, paraneoplasty. Whenever there is no cerebellar atrophy and you are thinking some and you find cerebellar attacks here of say six months or so, to always rule out other possibilities. Like autoimmune cerebellite and cerebellite is paraneoplasty but non paraneoplasty. Okay, so what do you want me to do in this patient, in this point of time? Already came with an MRI, MRI was known. Paraneoplastic workup, sir. Workup. So I think these are the possibilities uh, pre ACM, subacute cerebellar affection, paraneoplastic, autoimmune, NDG, AD, CD, acquernicus, encephalopathy. These are the things you have to keep in mind. Now, in fact, repeated the MRI to rule out any, in a, rule out any ACM. The surgical cut, the kinematical tension. There's no ACM in that part was ruled out. Then I took uh, the other cuts, I took, I took a thin cut of the cerebellum to find out any other abnormal female. Again, there is absolutely no cerebellarity. First MRI was taken one year back. This is taken now. Then this is the flare. Sir, is the fourth ventricle a little bit ballooned out, sir? Okay, I'll do that once again and show that. No, it's good. No, I think it's no. Nothing abnormal. Not very well done. You can see the Burmese part. It's normal. Okay. So, now what do you want to do? Any other investigation you asked for? Investors. Paraneoplastic. Paraneoplastic workup. Yes, paraneoplastic was done. This is a paraneoplastic antibody done. And now one, two, three, PCA, paraneoplastic. Uh, PCA, PCA means uh, Parkinji cell antibody. One, two, TR, Agna, CRMB, AP patient, NDMA, and time. All are negative. Then what to do now? GAD, GAD. Anti GAD, okay. Anti GAD antibody and normal. TPO, sir. TPO is also normal. Is all in, I forgot to mention that. That is here. That is normal. What to do now? Thiamine. Thiamine. Uh, possibility is there because of the Nikki Sensopolopoly. But MRI did not show any features of any vernicus sense, no hyperdensity in the mammary body, midbrain. So, genetic panel. Pardon? Genetic panel for genetic CA panel. Okay, you can ask for the CA panel. The but C you know, right? CSF was done, sir. CSF. CSF was not done. Now, we see it's a possibility theoretic, but the only thing is that even after two years, there is no cerebellar atrophy. See, in CA, you expect some atrophy to be seen. But no atrophy here. So, what do you like to do? Is a pan like, yeah. What I mean? Whatever pan, whatever antibody which are done is there, it's negative. Affect the cerebellum is negative. So, what do you want to do now? Do you give a trial of immunosuppression and then send the patient? Or just 
Today I am not hearing Bindu also. Bindu, can you be loud? Why CSF was not done, sir? Because yes. two years story, no? Which condition can you think? Two years progressive attacks here. Yeah. Autoimmune sometimes may, antibody may be negative, but you may get some right. protein elevation and all. No? But again, CSF is not going to prove that point, no? But we will be having some doubt, no? If you are having yeah. a high protein. Right. For right. starting, immunosuppressors, there will be some clue. No, nobody wanted something possible. I just asked why we did start or not. Oh, I did not do that. So I did this one instead. Whole body scanners because I was strongly suspecting perineoplasty. Because the cerebellar atrophy is not there in the progressive attacks, you always keep that in mind. And for also telling, there are many antibodies causing cerebellar movement. One classic intervention is sick for antibody, which they started doing it only now. Previously, I had shown one case of sick for antibody with non B nystagmus and vertical oscillopsia. He had a bronchogenic, he had a carcinoma, I mean, bronchogenic carcinoma. So, this paid whole body spectra is done. This is the report. Intense FDG uptake in the left lobe of heterogeneously enhanced in the thyroid line. He suggested USC neck and everything, mammogram correlation, etc. So, this is the FDG PET during the enhancing uh, uptake in the left lobe of the thyroid. So then US thyroid was done, we showed a nodule in the left upper pole and surgery was done. And it was a follicular carcinoma. So the lesson is that whenever there is a, I mean, uh, no atrophy, you always keep some autoimmune uh, involvement, either perineoplastic or non perineoplastic So, any questions? Sir, the downbeat nystagmus yeah. with a positional change, how will you explain that, sir? Yeah, that, that, uh, yeah, yeah. the one peculiarity of the vertical nystagmus, whether it is upbeat or downbeat nystagmus, characteristically downbeat are gravy sensitive. Gravy sensitive means sometimes it may be manifesting on exaggerated on head hanging position, classically in a CA6 and unrolled chain malformation. It may attenuate, it becomes sometimes downbeat, become upbeat on convergence. On prone position, make the patient prone, it may become upbeat. So these changes are well known with up, up and down, sorry, upbeat and downbeat nystagmus, characteristically downbeat nystagmus. Moreover, if you don't expect some, suppose you've got a doubt about the downbeat nystagmus, Always make the patient change the head position and look for downbeat nystagmus. Invariably, they'll become exaggerated or become more manifest. So, this positional change you should do in vertical nystagmus. Classically, in SCA6 described, the other in degenerative ataxia, the other is subnormal malformation also will be more when they keep the head in the hanging position because that is the position where the you know the tonsil is compressing against the uh, the um, the Inevitable next. Tonsil is behind, no? Then when you expand yes. it, it becomes cumbrous. The register. Okay. Shall we go to another case? Sir, uh, how do you treat this patient? No, this patient, paraneoplastic is difficult to treat. So I did that. First thing is that remove the thyroid gland. So surgery, it is posted for surgery. And then uh, the rest of the things we decide later on. Because perineoplastic antibody syndromes are very, very difficult to treat. You are, you, you are the only drugs which is which can be effective is that only IV, neither penicillin, there your IVIG or rituximab will not help. Your uh, only thing we can do, or plasma paresis will not help. If it is not, uh, it will be responsive to steroid, if not, go for endoxin, cyclophosphamide, because it is the antibody is acting, because this antigen is actually, I mean, the antibody is directed against the intracellular antigen, in the so-called ongoneural antigens. If it is a cell surface antigen or synaptic antigen, they are responsive to our classical immunosuppressive agents. 
if the and the, the, the immunosuppressant acting against the T cell, maybe like steroid, like cyclophosphamide, can be sometimes used for uh, ongoing antibodies antigens. And second, uh, second thing is that whether we do not know attacking this antigen antibody is going to be helpful or not, because we do not know whether really pathogenic or not, whether it's only a marker of uh, underlying malignancy. Unlike cell surface antigens, where they are really pathogenic, this antibody is pathogenic. The removal of the thyroid will it help? Yeah, it may, it, sometimes it can help. Sometimes this removal of this sensing can help because that will stop the antibody production and can kill. Thank you, sir. Sir, one, uh, one question, sir. What happened to that uh, young man last time? Young man with? Last time you discussed, no, sir, the uh, muscle left the lower lip. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do not know. In fact, you know, in fact, uh, 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 we thought of the possibility of an autoimmune condition like, say, Casper 2 and all, no? That yes, particular. Yes, so, sir, he was, yes, so he was given a tuximab and then came for uh, uh, sent home with the bandages to come for follow up. Sir, in that case, is there any possibility of neuro sir? Which one? The previous question? The previ yes, sir. Last week, yes. Yeah, we discussed that possibility. You know, the, their the MRI finding was not fitting with the basic syndrome. Brainstem was totally clear, the antifil was clear, mainly the subcortical lesion was there. Yes, and there is no clinical features of basic syndrome. Okay. Shall we go to another case? Yes, sir. Okay. This is a 26 year old lawyer. We said no case of thoracic hyposcoliosis. She said she has been having this problem for many years. She had a fever three weeks back and has bedded it for two days with fever. When he started walking after the fever, she noticed, according to her, full drop on the right side. No history of any pain in the right lower limb or any lower back. There's no sensory complaints, however. Now, this is the video of the patient. And it's a complaint to the lower lip, so only the lower lip. She is like, don't, the, lying down is a bit normal. The left side is not. Don't look on the right side, she's quite rigid. She keeps it. There is something like a spastic is happening on the right There is no behavior sign. I started examining the lower limb in detail. Power of the lower left lower limb normal. The right lower limb, they could overcome the flexion, but when asking to, to do that correctly, he could actually remain. With effort, she could hold the limb correctly. Other than the second, the second, the second, the second, the second, the second, the very good. Now you are cooperating. Okay. Keep it like that. But, 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 but,
proximity there. And media cross over the node. But if I have an exam in five years, but a contractor then no, actually it's on the right side. They cannot do stress here massively fully. But left it could do stress that to that extent. On the right side, it is resting. Only that much is. Again, the mandar came for initially the cup doing, but not very convincing. Sensation slightly decreased on the touch on the right lower limb. On the foot. He's telling less on the doors. He's able to feel vibration. He's in less. APS normal in the afternoon. That side is normal. Right side she is it. He says she is not sure. The cellar was negative. Then look at the gate of the patient. This is the gate. So an examination, this contract of the right endo Achilles, I could not passively do this angle fully. For each partial city, power testing, poor cooperation on the part of the patient, very weak or right dose plexus and EHL. Again, sensory system, very impairment of pain touch over the right dorsum, vibration decrease on the right foot, very impairment of JPS on the right foot. Risk, both the lower limb, plant are indefinite, SLR negative, gait is what you have seen. So, what do you think is the diagnosis? Possible. Heel and toe walking, sir. Pardon? Heel and toe walking. Okay, you want to see the walking gait once again? I'm sure the key. No, the heel walking, heel walking and toe walking, sir. Standing uh, on heels and toes. That I did not do. Because otherwise, it's uh, like a functional gait, no, sir. Yeah, you think it's a functional gait. Perfect. Okay. But she had contracture of the tendo Achilles. That may be an old one, no, sir. Yeah, maybe old one. Okay. Any other opinion? Armor person, sir. I should go to armor person. It appeared yeah. like some like a some some wasting is there in the dorsal foot, but no typical hematoma is not there. And this is very contracts of the pelvic muscles. Uh, it is not flexing the hip by walking. But they all things started after the fever, not yes. present before. That may be just a worsening due to fever. He is definitely having a myelopathy. Where is the level? Maybe uh, because of this um, 
sky for scolios control there may be an associated acm or something okay this is sky for system but then sky for system whether it is a fixed type for system sir then in fact i am bothered about only the lower limb i did not bother about the sky for okay i did not do that she came with the level of foot drop problem so you have to imagine what is causing okay what do you want me to do Mom. so she came with in fact mri this mri done it appeared normal cervical dorsal sir cervical dorsal i'll show them this is the lumbar cervical dorsal also there it's also normal except for mild kyphosis you know what else you need ncv yes ncv yes ncv there so lumbar plexus they also came with lumbar plexus lumbar normal so what else cervical dorsal mri normal so now this is nerve conduction look at the nerve conduction values peroneal normal tibial normal sensory potential normal if a was absent on the right peroneus peroneal now this now so this is the c value c map normal both on the both peroneal and tibial then uh, Sural sensory potential normal, F A absent. So what do you want to do? Green, green. The MRI green. Dambar, dambar. Lumbar what? Sir, CVJ was done, sir. CVJ was not done. Cervical spine MRI was done that you had shown before. That is normal. That I think did it. And you go to CVJ and just find out. Yes, yeah. yes. Will CSF help, sir? No, no. CSF was not done. Lumbosacral is an PT element. Okay. I'll tell you what I thought. In fact, I didn't have very much doubt about this condition. Her gait was clearly a functional gait. Okay, this is somebody that the doctor mentioned that it's a functional. It's a clearly a functional gait. See, look at the gait. See, she is holding the foot up, and as if it's walking with a like antalgic gait. See that one. I'll show the gait. See, he's dragging the foot like that, and keeping his foot like this. He's lifting it up like that. It's not a foot drop gate at all. She look at the turning around. What is she doing? Hmm. He's keeping the elevated whole limb is elevated above the knee of the ground. Then keeping it in some sort of distorting position. Is she keeping? So the question is okay. So gate is functional, agreed. Then how to explain the electrophysiological findings? So that so what I did was I invoked. I said I thought that the electrophysiology did was not correct. So I went myself to exam and do that. So I did it myself along with the electrophysiology. This I did the again the recheck. So this is normal conduction of the peroneal. That is normal amplitude. This is a favor. Only one point three is in the right side. I repeat it again. So here, a favor is in the right side. So I did do a surgery to put the problem in the ED. 
So I then but it's unlikely because CPAP is good in CPAP. We have tried with the common with the daily cycle. Again, if they wish. And I want it to was achieve the sweep speed of 20 milliseconds. Then the FM is appearing in a very widespread small amplitude wave wave. Like, this is FM when the sweep speed is 25, instead of 10, 25 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds. It's coming at a long interval. So, FA from the right TDP is absent, FA from the right TA is absent. We we'll change the sweep speed to 20 millisecond instead of 10 millisecond, the dispersed FA could be seen. No, I wanted to know what will you like to do. That means surely, surely there is some uh, um, conduction um, velocity changes in the proximal part of the uh, FA, I mean, FA pathway. Maybe in the root, maybe in the proximal part of the neck. So I, I wanted to know whether it was there on the left side as well. So I did the left side. This is in CPA from the left side. Then try to do the FA on the left side. Unaffected side. The other says also a few only few FFs are seen. But we don't need three waves could be picked up out of the ten. So only few FFs are in the persistence only less than 50%. That's also H reference was done, that is normal on both sides. So what is a diagnosis? See, the point is that. Whatever be the electrophysiologic abnormality you have detected, that cannot explain the weakness in this patient. Because CMAP is normal. Because that means CMAP is normal, means muscle power is normal. So if you have latency is prolonged, only indicates that some prolongation of the conduction there. That does not mean anything. So if a prolongation will not produce any weakness also. Sensory potential is also normal. So electrophysiologic abnormality cannot explain the abnormality in this particular patient. Why it is occurring may be incidental, and the fact that it is present on the left side also tells you that it is not related to our particular patient. It's also abnormal. And my contention is that probably is related to the old kyphoscoliosis which the patient had, which may affect some conduction prolongation, conduction prolongation in the proximal part of the root. That is the only explanation I can give. But this finding was there. In fact, it, it's, only, it's only functional gain. Because everything occurred after the fever two days, that she developed all these things. It is functional already. What about the briskness of the jerks, which you say? You know, that can be seen that even normal people can have some brisk reflexes. It's we pass it off as an exaggerated jerk, you know, physiologically, physiologically. Yeah, 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 physiologically exaggerated. Moreover, the patient sometimes tends, they can have brisk reflexes. Even suppose you are emotionally upset or you're appearing for the examination, they get brisk reflexes. So brisk reflexes alone may not be very important. You take the, if you take the whole picture into consideration, the plantar is not upgoing, the gait is not clearly spastic gait. She's keeping the head like that. They have to live like that. You know, a MRI already done was normal. And the gate is typically functional. You know, that's what, I, what I'm trying to say is that even if you find electrophysiologic abnormality, always try to think that whether that can explain the patient's disability. Someday we may be unrelated to the present patient's problem like this. So we are not done the FA with this patient before. Whether it has been there before, we don't know. The fact that it is present on the left side also tells you that it is not related to a particular patient's problem. Some problem in that particular bit causing him to pay for So now it's Okay, any questions?
Shall we stop? One more, one more short case. Sir. One more short. Uh, let me see. I think this is short. It's a long case. I think. Okay, if you want, I can show that case also. But one more case. Yes, sir. Okay, because next week, no, next Tuesday there is no program because of that. Uh, you know, puja holiday. Many other people said they can't come because of the puja. So I think I will show one more case today. Okay, next week, yes, Tuesday there won't be a a class. Okay. This is a story of a 24-year-old male. His complaint started 12 years back as loosening of the chappals from the left foot. 12 years back. One year later, he noticed difficulty in elevating his left foot along with numbness over the dorsum of the left foot. Along with this, he also noticed thinning of his left leg. There is a long duration. He was admitted in a major hospital and surgery was done in the back. However, he denied any improvement for life surgery. For the last four years, he developed weakness in elevating the right foot, along with the numbness and burning pain of the right dorsum. This was followed two years later by sagging of the hip while walking. Is to perseverance in maturation for the last three two months. So this is the story of the patient. I'll go back to the story once again. Complaint started twelve years back. Sorry, as loosening of the chappals on the left foot, then noticed difficulty elevating the left foot along with numbers of the dorsum. Along with this, he also noticed thinning of the left leg. We submit to major hospital. Surgery was done. No improvement. No, it progressed to the development on the right foot with the numbness and veining pain. Then later by the hip sagging and then bladder problems. This examination finding, hip flexion was normal. Straight leg. Knee extension normal. First of all, first B on the left side. Right side is the soft power. Almost zero power on the left. Nature also. Nature was slightly weak. And it was good. That is weak on the left. Sahal is soft. This is a good thing. This is a good thing. This Right hip abduction was almost normal. Abduction was normal. Okay. <laughs> But I right is there, left side is the right side is brilliant. Left side is brilliant. Okay. Knee check is missed. Both sides. And knee check right is uh, just still it's a triple on absent. Left is not here. Mandar is the flute by left. 
కన్నడకి ఎన్ని చట్టాలు ఎన్ని కన్నడ అది కావాలి పొందిన వర్కేయండి మరి So this is the gate to the patient. so basting of both legs left more than the right power right lower limb all normal except gait for for the right to specific angle hip flexion says any effect says left lower limb hip flexion adduction normal abduction hip flexion says gait for knee extension says normal flexion gait 3 angle dose flexion plantar flexion inversion inversion only gait 1 abdominal flex absent on the left side sluggishly present on the right DTR, lower limb, knee jacks, brisk, and knee jack absent. Pandas mute, sensation, all normal except for decreased pain over the nose of both feet. SLR negative. Any, any questions you can ask regarding the finding? It could be a cardiacone lesion, sir. Okay, very good. Any other opinion? What I can have, which are the roots likely to be involved in this patient? L5 S1, sir. Yeah, L5 S1, very good. L5 S1 bilaterally. More on the More left, on side. left side. Yeah, perfect. Because it typically... But for the abdominal, it's uh, reduced on the left side, sir. Oh, correct. Abdominal is reduced, absent on the left side. Right side is decreased. It is illicitable, but left side is absent. That will clear out, no? Is it not odd? Yes. Pardon? Need a concept. Yeah, this replaces. But as I told you, maybe, maybe normal for the patient because we don't get any weakness of the cortis of the renis plasticity. So maybe normal or maybe really brisk, we don't know. సో మచ్ 
Um, yeah. No, that can that can definitely occur because I'll tell you the reason is that you know if you look at the hip extension also is severely weak. The patient cannot hold it against gravity. They are also supplied by the same rules. The point is that the root supply of the multicular muscle need not be uniform all throughout. Some it may be more, some it may be less. So that sometimes the disparity can occur. If the hip extensor also has got a good power, then your problem will come. Here the hip extensor is also zero power, or my say not zero. You cannot again hip it against gravity. You remember last time, I, last week I showed a case, just last week only, with almost just like a typical foot drop. You remember that case? Typical foot yeah. drop, zero power, but hip abduction normal due to alpha S1 directly. You remember that particular patient last week? Yes. So that disparity sometimes can occur. One particular muscle may not be entirely uh, the classical textbook description of the root innervation. May not be applicable in all patients. But one your point is well taken because see, that reflex has has to be given significance because of the absent abnormal reflex. If it was also normal, that reflex may not be that important. Because in, in view of the absent abdominals and the brisk knee, you have to think the pyramidal lesion is likely to be present. Correct? Yes. Yeah, so what will, what will be your thinking in this question? Higher lesion, higher up. Higher up means vision squad or element lesion also in the below? Something like the third card. Like. The third card. The third card. Correct, perfect, perfect. So this is one condition you can think of a chord. I can leave primal sign, think of it, the third card central. So what this is the investigation. So what do you find in the MRI? Low line cord. Yeah, low line, not only long line cord. See the whole this cord, the roots are clumped together and attached to the dorsal part of the dura. See, this is sort, this is the cord icon. See, it looks something like a cord there. But actually, it's a cord icon, the roots clump together and attached to the dura here. I'll show the axial cut a little more. Uh, see, this, see, this is the Roots are coming and attached here from the dorsal aspect of the spinal uh, dura. See, this is happening. The uh, this is the clumped uh, cord icon. Lower down, there is some 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 meningosy like thing. You can see the cord icon roots are all going towards the uh, spina bifida thing and then attached to the dorsal aspect. That's where it's adherent to the dura. See that one. See, the roots are all adherent. And this is the spina bifida. So this set to that cord in the spina to that cord syndrome. In the history, they, there is a history that telling you that you get surgery done for a swelling in the back. That itself tell you a special time in having a meningocele. But did not work out, but gradually progressed. Even after surgery. Okay, so when do we get? Yeah, yes. Brain is normal. Brain and cervical is normal. I don't know because this case we just taken seen long back, by six years back. I don't know whether brain and cervical spine MRI. I cannot remember that. So why do they worse in this age, sir? Yeah, because and, uh, and uh, this is happening. You know, this is when what is age of the patient? Age was uh, 20, 12 years. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Yeah, yeah, twenty six. Usually they worsen up to the uh, up to the growth period. After that, usually don't worsen. If it is got worsening, there is some other arachnoiditis uh, developing second due to the surgery. So I had a surgery and undergone a surgery earlier. No? The arachnoiditis sometimes develop that can worsen. Due to the management, sir, how to manage this type of patients? No, in fact, this patient was submitted. I mean, uh, do a surgery. He was not willing for surgery because already one surgery and difficulty because surgery is also very difficult in such situation. You try to disengage these roots from the dura; it can cause further damage to the roots. So surgeons will be very, very reluctant. 
I was also not pressing him for a surgery because I had not what will be the outcome in this patient. Because the previous surgery was done in a good center, but still that did not work out. Okay. Shall we close it? Good night, sir. Okay, good night. Yes, good night. Good night. Yeah, thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Next week is no program. To the week after that. Okay. Yes. Happy Dasra to everyone. Happy Dasra to everyone. Okay. Pardon? Yeah. Okay, then. Good night. 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 Good night, sir. And... Happy Dasra, sir. Happy Dasra. Thank you. Same to you, sir. Same here, sir. Sorry, I, I couldn't locate my video. Where is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I heard your voice, then I could recognize you. Listening to you is always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night sir. May we make.